Welcome to the new Leaders in Security interview series by the International Security Journal. I'm Philip Ingram, and I'm your host today, and I'm talking to Hugo Rosemont, who is the Director of Security and Resilience with the trade body ADS. Hugo, great to see you. Great to see you again, Philip. Now, ADS, you put on, before the pandemic hit us, uh, security and policing at Farnborough, which was a huge success. I really enjoyed being there. Um, how did it come across from, from your perspective? Well, Philip, thanks for the feedback. Yes, um, we were very pleased with the event. This took place between 3rd and 5th of March down in Farnborough in, in the United Kingdom, just south of London. And um, obviously, an event taking place at that particular moment in time was... Uh, not the most straightforward planning environment, should we say, um, but we were delighted with the turnout and um, the fact that we um, received the same number of visitors and actually uh, a slightly enhanced number of exhibitors was really good opportunity for the UK security and resilience sector to, for the industry to promote its capability to domestic and international stakeholders. And I'm, I'm happy to say that many of our international allies and partners attended, notwithstanding the challenging environment. So we were very pleased. The feedback's good. And um, we kick on for March uh, 2021. Now, you had some fantastic features at the show. Can you tell those that are watching a little bit about the, the features? And um, it's probably too early at the moment, but what are you planning for next year's? Well, thanks. The event introduced a number of new features, really the cornerstone of which was a brand new feature that we were very proud of called the Fusion Forum. This was a new sort of interactive theatre that we put in the main exhibition hall. It was really designed to have a, a, a really deep and detailed conversation between government and industry on um, managing national security challenges. So it's deliberately designed as an, a sort of an open thought leadership exchange, where um, before the event, we actually set a number of national security challenges to the exhibitors in attendance. Three topic areas where we ask specific questions, uh, questions which we form with government partners were around how to mitigate the use of hostile drones around small sites in around the country, so sort of beyond the major installations such as Gatwick Airport and Heathrow. How, how do we actually achieve that at small sites? We then had one on uh, the protection of crowded places and specifically how to actually uh, roll out training across the whole of the open space environment in the UK. So quite a substantial challenge there. And then lastly, not least, we had a uh, a challenge on CBRN, so mitigating the impact of chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear attack, and specifically a, a question focused on remediation. And I have to say that around that particular feature, which had a, a whole host of other content, including keynotes and other panel sessions, we had a real genuine exchange between policymakers in the UK security machinery and industry who brought their ideas to the fore on how to actually mitigate those challenges. So feedback for that was tremendous and we're certainly planning to repeat it next year. And, and within that, complementing it, there were a number of um, amazing uh, immersive demonstrators that were there. Um, they provided a, a, a real um, additional capability in, in, into the event that I think a lot of people enjoyed. Absolutely. So this event is the official UK Home Office annual event, which we're, as ADS, very sort of privileged to have the trust, their trust really, to actually deliver that. And they were really responsible for driving two live immersive features at the event. One was on finding new ways to tackle knife crime, and it involved a number of, sort of companies, but also charitable foundations to participate in finding new ideas and innovation to actually tackle the blight of an unfortunate rise in violent crime in the UK, not just in the UK, but, but certainly in some of our major cities. And then the second one was a live immersive feature called Plan, Travel and Visit. And this was really the end-to-end -end solution of planning and then delivering a, a fully integrated transportation solution with fully integrated security solutions from scanning technology all the way through to the use of data to to, to, to mitigate risks, including terrorism, but organized crime and, and a whole host of other issues. Obviously now we're in a very challenging period around the use of the airport <laughs> network, um, but that doesn't mean that uh, uh, we don't need to be thinking about delivering integrated solutions in the transport network moving forward. And I think S&P Security and Policing 2020 offered a great platform to show the sort of solutions that we can be using in two, five, 10 years time. 
Well, yes, very interesting times. Um, I, I don't think we, uh, and I was there uh, and at it, I don't think anyone thought of a pandemic as a way of stopping knife crime on the streets of London. Um, it, it's certainly influencing and, and having an impact on the security industry. What are you seeing from the, the trade body's perspective, uh, the, the, the effects of pandemics having on the industry? Well, thanks for the question. And um, ADS represents sort of four sectors, really, aerospace, defence, security and space. And we have about 1,200 member companies. And one of the decisions we took quite early into uh, the process, if that's even the right expression for this current situation, <laughs> was around ensuring that we were very accessible and available to our members. And to do that, we took a decision that we'd be feigning each and every one of the members across the organisation to check in, see how they're doing, an annual call bank uh, initiative, as we call it internally. Um, so I, like many of my colleagues participated in that and really the impacts vary depending on sort of the nature of the business. You know, we have companies who are manufacturing solutions across all those four sectors who are literally having to introduce social uh, distancing mechanisms on the manufacturing floor. You know, the idea of us implementing these sort of measures just, I guess, eight weeks ago was, was almost inconceivable. So fair to say that business operations have had to shift quite Quite a lot in that period and um, we have seen a lot of our members uh, over 10 of them in fact large medium and small companies directly involved in supporting the government's ventilator challenge here in the united kingdom we have um, a well documented need or had to actually manufacture urgently a good number of uh, new ventilator uh, um, capabilities to help mitigate this crisis, to help support the National Health Service uh, with what it needed. So we've also seen a, a manufacturing pivot, as I sometimes call it, which is, you know, our members who perhaps are more used to manufacturing sort of commercial aircraft, pivoting quite quickly to actually play a role in support of the government's national effort to uh, deliver a response. So a hugely rapidly evolving environment. It's not easy out there, I must say, but it's good to see our, con our members making such good contributions, notwithstanding this challenging climate. Yes, I think the, the last time we saw such a massive change um, from uh, the sorts of industries that are your membership was probably the Second World War. It's quite interesting because um, on the security and resilience side, Philip, we're very conscious that the larger, the last major sort of event that had such serious security implications was around the London 2012 Olympics. Uh, that in itself was the largest sort of military deployment on mainline Britain since the Second World War. This far exceeds obviously the London Olympics in terms of the resources that the state is bringing to bear, the, the whole resources of the government machinery. And I think it's fair to say in that context that whilst industry played a major role in the London Olympics, this, this, the response to this particular crisis is calling on even more from our industry. So yeah, I would agree that it's a whole national effort here. Um, happily, our, our members are playing a really constructive period. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and say that uh, a good number of SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises, are finding it very difficult at the moment in some cases. Uh, that That is obviously the case, but I think when the government is asked, and it's good to ask, uh, it has found a good response, and I think we need that sort of spirit of openness between government and industry so that we can help mitigate this extremely uh, challenging time as well as the challenges that no doubt will come in front of us in the future. And, and, and where can people go, um, the people that are watching this, go to get more information about ADS um, and the support that ADS is giving your members out through this difficult period of time? Well, thanks for that. And we have obviously our, our website, that's www.adsgroup.org.uk. And I think I'd recommend uh, to any viewers, particularly ADS members, but it is an open source of information, our COVID-19 hub that we have accessible by the homepage. And in there, there's everything from uh, drawing on and signposting government guidance that we have. Uh, and, and, and obviously the UK government, like many governments, is implementing a wide range of sort of financial 
actual measures and support to the industry. So, so clearly signposted for members there. But one of the things I would like to draw attention and, and perhaps more widely is that on that uh, web, web page there's also an area which lists current live calls for support from our members in terms of the capabilities. So whether it's supporting things like the ventilator challenge, whether it's the urgent call uh, now underway for manufacturers and others to help support uh, the manufacturer, urgent manufacturer of um, PPE, uh, personal protective equipment and, and clothing, um, whether it's finding new solutions and new ideas and innovation that, that the state hasn't even thought about. Just over the past 24 hours, we've had contact from the government around how it is that the drone suppliers industry might be able to support this crisis. And so uh, it's through the ADS website that we put these opportunities, some of which are funded, some of which are calls for information. Uh, and it's a really important direct route through to the industry. Well, Hugo, on, on that note, it's been a real pleasure talking to you for the International Security Journal uh, Leaders in Security series that um, uh, has just started. Philip, absolute pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for your time.